For those of you who are taking communicative abilities in English 2, wanted to spend a few minutes talking about how we'll be working the last two weeks of the semester. Today is May 21st, 2022. And uh, I'll be back in the office. We'll be back in class face-to-face -face, uh, as of May 27th. This is a, a few days later than we originally had, uh, had discussed. But I will be back in the office May 26th, the Thursday before our classes on May 27th. So I want to give you some things to think about, some uh, things to work on and look at and to consider as you're working on your essay. I went in and started looking at some of the essays. I basically only looked at, let's say, maybe the first or the top 10 or 15 or so um, essays, and I sorted it by the last time changes were made to the document. So uh, I understand that some of you are still working on your, your essay and your different stages in your process, but based on what I was able to see so far, I did come up with a list of things that I think we can start to look at as we are uh, drafting or writing out our first draft. Talking about due dates, since I've been out of the uh, office and away from class for essentially almost two weeks now, uh, by the time I, I come back, I want to push back if you need it, if you need an extra week for the first draft, I want to move back the due dates for the first draft to the last day of class, June 3rd, and the final draft, June 10th, uh, if you need it. Okay, so essentially when I come back on the 27th, uh, I will be working with you, and if you feel like you can meet these dates and finish by the end of our last class, June 3rd, then I will uh, give you feedback as you need it, right, to, to make that happen. But again, if you need an extra week, then that's fine, all right? There's no problem uh, pushing back one week, both the, the, the uh, first draft and the final draft. This week, starting the tw 24th, Tuesday, we won't have class, but I will be taking uh, emails and scheduling time online uh, if you need to discuss your essay. Okay, so again, no classes until May 27th, but if you if something is urgent and you need to, we need to discuss something, or if you want to shoot me an email or send me a message through the chat, uh, feel free to do so. All right, so take a look at the list of, let's say, I think there are 15 items here that I listed here in the feedback. I will continue adding to this list as I review your work, but what I have here, this list of 15, are some things that came up based on what I was able to see so far, okay? I, I understand we're still early in the process. Some of you have not uploaded any text yet, uh, so you may not have received any comments uh, in your Word document. But the 15 points that I have here are also comments that I left in the Word document. Now, I will say in a lot of cases, in fact, most cases, I referenced these points, I left a comment in your Word document, but you'll benefit, I think, if you need more information to refer to this list that I'm sharing with you here on my screen. And I've also included some links along with some references down at the bottom uh, to additional information if you need it. All right, if you need clarification, these links, I think, will uh, are intended to help you get additional information if you need it. Okay, so these 15 points are in no particular order. I basically went in order as I as they occurred as I was reviewing some of the essays. Uh, so just very quickly, number one, what's the purpose of your essay? So make sure in the title page you have both a target audience and the purpose. Make sure the target audience is specific enough. Make sure you have either adjectives or maybe a relative clause. Maybe you think about age academic level, English level, location. Um, think about the different types of teachers or students that might be 
your target audience. And it doesn't necessarily mean your target audience should be teachers or students. It could be administrators, it could be parents, et cetera. Number two, remove all extraneous information. I know some of you are still in the writing process, but as you're drafting your first draft, as you're completing your first draft, I'm going to ask that you remove all extraneous information. All right, so um, you can do this at any point. Maybe copy and paste what you have if you have an outline, if you have extra headings that you're using to kind of direct yourself in the writing process. Um, you know, maybe you want to copy and paste that over to a separate document so that you have it later to refer to. That's fine. But I would ask that everyone for the first draft to remove extra all extraneous information. That includes comments in Word, highlighted text, extra headings, outlines, problem statements, maybe a thesis statement that's separate, right, from the thesis statement that you have at the end of the introduction paragraph and the thesis statement that you have to begin your, your conclusion paragraph. Number three, begin writing your essay. So I think some of the feedback, I just uh, just ask that you start writing your, your, uh, your essay. I would begin always with the first body paragraph. I wouldn't begin with the introduction other than the thesis statement, which comes from the skeleton outline. I wouldn't worry about the hook. I would make sure you have conceptually, you have a problem in mind, but in terms of writing out the problem, I would probably wait until later to do that. I would focus on the first body paragraph that you find is easiest to write. Maybe it's the first body paragraph, the second or the third body paragraph. It doesn't matter. You need to get that first body paragraph completed as soon as possible and start with the easiest one. Right. It once one of the hardest things to do in writing is just getting started. So begin with the easiest one. This also will allow you, if you wanted to receive feedback early on so that you can take that feedback into consideration as you're developing paragraphs, body paragraphs number two and three. All right. Now the next point, point number four. Uh please check how you format the Word document. And I have a, a link here with a video that I discuss point by point how to format your text, both in terms of the essay itself and also the references. So please take that into consideration when you're uh, writing your first draft. I would look at this formatting early on. This is something that's, I think, easy to do, but you just basically have to do it once. As long as you're not copying and pasting text from another document, you format your text one time and you shouldn't have to go back. You shouldn't have to do it again. Okay. So it's a one-time deal in most cases, except in those cases where you're copying and pasting, which always is, you can just plan on having to go back and check again, your formatting when you're copying and pasting text from one word document to another, because you're not only copying and pasting the text itself, but you're the, also the formatting, the type of font, the spacing, the indentation, everything. Point number five, check how to cite sources according to APA. Again, I have a link here for additional information. Find examples, especially with articles. Remember, we need to have at least three peer review journal articles. So that has a very specific type of format according to APA. A book has a very particular type or format for listing that out in your references. So each type of reference has its own format. Okay. But in most of our cases, the articles are going to be, uh, at least, you know, that, that'll be the, the main type of format that we need to, uh, be aware of so that we have at least our three correct there uh, to begin with. Then, uh, once we get into additional types, then we can look at it on a case by case basis to see how to format it. All right, number six, make sure to include at least five citations throughout your essay. So at least one citation in each body paragraph except for the conclusion paragraph. Now, this requirement does not include a citation that might support the hook. Remember that one type of hook to begin your introduction paragraph might be a very important or impactful fact or statistic. 
In that case, you would need a citation along with a reference at the bottom. And this requirement, this uh, these five, this five citation requirement does not include those cases where you have a hook and you need a citation to support that hook. Number seven, make sure to include a minimum of three references that come from peer review journal articles. I have a link here as to what I mean by peer review journal articles, but essentially a peer review article is gonna have a title of the article, it's gonna have a name of a journal, it's gonna have a volume number in most cases, and it could have an issue number, and of course, you're going to have pages. You're going to have the first page of the article, and you should have the last page of the article. Okay. Essentially, you know, if you have that information, you are, can be fairly assured that this is, in fact, a, a peer review journal article. But I have included a link here if you need it to uh, find additional information about these types of articles. Number eight, avoid contractions. When you're writing an academic text, we want to avoid contractions. Number nine, check the format of the title of your essay. Make sure you have a title case capitalization. Click this link to see more about that. Six to 12 words, centered to the page and also in bold. Number 10, review the five elements of a thesis, a thesis statement as we discussed in class. You can click here to get additional information. We've talked at length about the five elements of a thesis statement. Number 11, avoid compound sentences as the topic sentence. So instead, try to write a complex sentence as a topic sentence. Number 12, avoid some words. Now, so far, words and phrases that we want to avoid, number one, important, or any form of the word important. That includes importance, importantly, we want to avoid phrases with the word important, like it is important. We also want to avoid phrases like it is necessary, it is vital. So essentially, any word or synonym of the word important, we want to avoid. Why do we want to avoid? What's wrong with using this word? Because we want to show the reader instead of tell the reader. When we write the word important, we're saying, hey, this is important. The rest of the sentences, not so much, but this sentence, this is really important, so pay attention. No, every sentence that we write is important or should be important. Otherwise, why write it? We don't want to say, hey, this information is more important than something else. It all should be important in its own way through you showing the reader, through providing evidence, providing analytic thought, having a very clear organizational pattern, having clear topic sentences, et cetera. Everything that we've talked about is setting out to make your essay significant, making it important. So we don't need to tell the reader important. We want to avoid the word very. I think I included a link of words that you can use to substitute for the word very. And uh, we, we can talk about that if we need to, but it, all you, do, all you have to do is go online and say how to avoid very, V-E-R-Y. Now, V-A-R-Y, like variety, very, that's okay, but not very, V-E-R-Y, the adverb. Okay, number 13, avoid websites as references. Okay, so make sure, again, we need at least three peer-reviewed journal articles, but we also all together want to avoid websites. Now, as a general uh, some general advice, okay, when you're writing any kind of academic article or essay, you, you always want to avoid dot-com websites, encyclopedias, online encyclopedias, or even, you know, physical encyclopedias, if we even ever use those anymore, and dictionaries. Avoid dictionaries, encyclopedias, and dot-com websites. That's, that's just general feedback for any kind of academic essay. Now, for our purposes, we want to avoid all websites. That also includes .gov, .edu, um, 
so yeah, we want to focus primarily, first of all, on our at least three primary research articles. And if you have more than three, of course, that's fine. If you have at least three, that minimum of three peer-reviewed journal articles, then you might have a book, you might have a conference, proceedings, you might have a book chapter. Those are also acceptable if you have those beyond the three required peer-reviewed journal articles. Number 14, begin each sentence with the main clause. So I'm suggesting the topic sentence to be a complex sentence, but we want to begin the topic sentence with the main clause. No transitions, no subordinating clauses, for example. Number 15, avoid the forward slash. Sometimes I see the forward slash to mean this or this, okay? Um, so I would avoid the slash, and if you feel like, oh, I want to say this or this using the connector or, um, I think I would just choose one or the other. Which one is best, you know, representative of the idea that you want to say? I think in most cases we can even avoid the connector or. Now, and's a little bit different, this and this, depending on the context, okay? But just always ask yourself those, those two things that you're either contrasting or comparing. I mean, if they're the same thing or if one is just better than the other, then sometimes it's best just to choose one or the other. But that's something we can look at on a case-by-case -case basis if uh, you need clarification. But this point simply is suggesting that you... Avoid the forward slash. All right, so, so far, guys, these are the points that came up. Again, I'm taking these ideas from what I see, All right? I could come up with a longer list just based on my experience, but I like to just take what I see and share that with you. I have not responded or left comments as of today, 1048 at uh, May 21st, uh, 2022. At this point so far, I haven't left comments on everyone's text because I still feel like a lot of you are still very much in the early stages of the writing process. So I've only left comments to a few of you that I felt had something that I could look at to provide some level of feedback. This document I'm sharing with you here, I'm going to share in Canvas. And it's going to be under week 16, under the module 16. And like I mentioned before, I will continue to add to this feedback list. I'll just continue on with the numbering. Okay, where so far, as of today, we have a list of 15. I'll continue with this list as I see new items, new things that uh, I could add to this. The idea here, the way that I would go about with your writing is to make sure you're checking each one of these points one by one. Now, some of these are not going to apply to you. Other points may. So the first thing is to make sure that you understand what I'm getting at when I leave this feedback. That's really the impo most important part, right, that you need to consider first. Then compare or review your own text and see if it applies to you. I would also get with a writing partner and help each other check each other's work for these same points and just take each one. Don't, don't just skip over or, you know, read the list once and then take a look at your own work. Take it one by one. Start with point number one. What's the purpose of your essay? Take a look at it. Some of these points that I'm mentioning in the feedback, you can just look one at one place in your text and then see if it's done, see if it's correct or not, and then move on. For example, the title. Okay, You only have to look at one, well, actually two places, the title page and the very first page of your essay, but that's it. While other forms of feedback, for example, checking for the word important to make sure that you've avoided the word important, this is going to require that you review the entire text from top to bottom. Or if you're writing the text, coming back to this point and making sure that you're, you're avoiding this. So take it upon yourself to see how to find each one of these, but take each point one by one. Again, don't try to memorize the list. I think that's a, a waste of time. I think more you can be more effective if you go one by one 
and even do a little checklist to your to yourself or whatever works for you, but that you take each point one by one and you search the entire text. Of course, if you have questions about the feedback that I have, I have included links here. After you've checked the links and the information that I've included here at the bottom under references, if you still have questions, you're not sure, then these could be questions that you're posing to me, whether it's in class, whether it's messages via chat in Microsoft Teams. If it's something serious or something we need to discuss, something that you just need clarification, it would be best or I think better to have a conversation. Of course, we can schedule that as well. So week 16, my friends, will be back in class on the 27th on Friday. I will be fielding questions and meeting you online as necessary, but reach out to me, schedule time to do that. Uh, but we will not have class online, and our first class meeting with the whole group face-to-face -face will be, again, Friday the 27th. All right, guys, so I hope this helps give you, maybe orient you a little bit uh, in where you are currently in your writing process. Uh, these two weeks are going to require more than usual, uh, a lot of autonomous learning. It really is going to require you to set time to read and write and outline and, and make these changes as you need to, since we're, we're not having class in the, in the, as we uh, have before. So please make sure you're continuing to make process, progress <clears throat> and, um, We'll, we'll address, uh, we'll talk in, about the due dates. As I mentioned before, we'll move it back if you need it. Some of you may not need it or just would want to try to finish on the third, your final draft, so you don't have to mess with it during exams week. So you do have that option. But uh, that's something we can clarify and discuss uh, when we get back face-to-face uh, -face in class. Okay, guys, I hope this helps. Take care of yourselves, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you soon.